financial services provided by banks and other financial institutions. Hi, I'm Bill Carmody. And when you think about the different financial services that banks and other ins financial institutions are providing, they have evolved quite a bit. In the very beginning, it was just a savings and checking account and maybe loans to ho for ho houses. But now we have much more sophisticated financial products that exist out there in the marketplace. And so what you wanna think about is what are the things that a person would need in order to run their financial life today? So a lot of that comes with the same basic things in terms of uh, like a check checking account. However, now you're using online checking, which basically means that you don't need a checkbook anymore. Physical checks are basically they're, they're a thing of the past. They might need them occasionally, but the vast majority of people are paying their bills online, which means they're using their web the website to actually pay any type of bill that they want to pay through their bank. Now, in addition to that, you also have a number of cash apps. So if I don't want to use a check and I don't want to even use my financial institution, I could use a cash app, which basically allows people to exchange dollars. So you'll hear people saying, that you know, please Venmo me, or they use a particular cash app that allows them to split the bill uh, when they're going out to dinner. And this is a way for people to use their mobile technology to be able to share financial, financial resources with one another. Another thing that's really important when you think about this is a fiduciary. Now, what's different from a financial advisor and a fiduciary is that a fiduciary is legally required to put your needs above their own. Now, that is not true for all financial advisors. And so if you're beginning to think about your investments and your 401k and really thinking about how you want to retire or what your financial future looks like, make sure you're talking to a fiduciary, somebody who specifically has legally required to put their needs above your needs above theirs. Because if they're not, what ends up happening is they can make recommendations that would create a conflict of interest. What that would mean is, for example, if a financial advisor got a bigger commission on one product and what's best for you is a different product, as long as they're quote unquote suitable, they can recommend a product that they get a better commission on, even if you'd be better off using this other product over here. That's the kind of stuff you want to really pay attention to. And so when you're looking at the financial industry, while there's tons of stuff that's out there and the changes are being made, what we're really seeing is the transformation of traditional banking, which has historically been held by the financial institutions, and more consumers being able to take control of their financial lives. So that changes the game. It starts to make sure consumers that can actually have banks compete for their business versus the other way around. It used to be that if you need to buy a car, you'd go and you'd ask a bank for a loan and then you show up to the, the, the uh, auto dealership. Now in the auto dealership itself, they can come up with multiple quotes from multiple banks in about 10, 15 minutes. And it's also true if you're looking for a home loan, you know, you can go to a mortgage broker, you can go to a lender, but you also could go and find a whole bunch of different quotes for yourself online. So it's changing the industry because consumers have a lot more power today than they ever have. And because of that, it means they have a lot more options in terms of how, where they actually get their loans, how they pay their bills, and how who's overseeing their investment portfolios. So think about that as you're starting to strategize the different ways people are going into the market from a financial perspective.